Hey, welcome back to another video for our photo app. So in this video, I'm going to take the previous work and the URI list and see if we can display that in a list view. So I'm going to create a new activity with just a list view on it and then populate it with the list. So let's see what happens. I'm going to use some predefined things that are provided to us by Android Studio so we don't have to reinvent everything. So I'm going into my uh, class area in the Java's section and I'm going to create a new activity and choose empty activity. So this is going to create two things for us. Let's call this thing photo list. And you can see that the uh, class is going to be called photo list. And then there's a, an associated layout called activity underscore photo underscore list. And uh, well, let's see what happens with that. So we'll finish. Okay, so the message at the bottom of the screen says the Gradle build is finished. Let's see what it added. So photo list is on the screen. And we have another item in the resources layout area called activity photo list. So it's an empty activity. Well, that's exactly what we wanted. So I searched the internet and I looked for a special class called list activity. So this is at the official documentation for Android developer. So what is list activity? Well, in the hint you can get, it is an activity. And what's it supposed to do? It displays a list of items by binding to a data source such as an array or an array list and exposes the event handlers. Okay, so this is this is great. It auto automatically is going to do many things for us. So it says here there is a screen layout request. It says you must have a list view object with the ID of Android ID slash list. So that's a little bit odd. We've never done that before. And fortunately they've given us some starter code. So Let's just take the XML file, which is the layout that they would prefer. And the key part in here is that it has a list view with this predefined ID name. So that's the key part that's different. So anyway, we'll copy the whole thing and we'll put it into our version of the app. So we've got our layout in front of us. Let's go into the text view. I'm going to remove everything that was created and replace it with the newest one. Oh my goodness, what are they thinking? They have a background of bright red. It's not really what I wanted, so I think we can safely change that. And the text is a background of bright green. Are they really serious? Well, we'll use black and white. So the key term here is that they said, make sure that you have this uh, list view ID set. So we're good. Let's go and see what it looks like. So the design view shows a list and the text view says no data. All right, so far so good. So let's switch into the code that's behind this. So here's the Java code. So the photo list extends um, map activity. Let's, let's change that to list, list activity. Okay, so that is the key difference now based on the documentation we just looked at. Now I'm going to need a reference to the, the actual array list that we were populating in the previous video. So I want to have the, uh, let's see, I can probably just copy from the beginning here. So we have this uh, variable called URI list. We're going to use him again in the uh, next photo list app. So we got a URI list. Then in the uh, setup for the onCreate method, we want to get a reference to the global URI list. Well, I did that in the other activity as well. So let's go see if I can find that. Where did I get a reference to that? It's right here on line 86. So inside of on activity result, I got a URI list from the my application class. So that was complicated and painful to get. So I'm going to just copy it and paste it into here. So I have a URI list ready to go. So the next item is we're going to have to create an adapter. Now I'm not just creating a generic adapter, I'm using one called an array adapter, which is the simplest kind that only works with um, simple lists of text strings. And so that's what we have, a list of strings. So we're going to have adapter equals a new adapter. So we need three parameters for an adapter. First of all, we need to have the context. So I'm going to use the word this. Then I'm going to use the word Android. So then for the um, actual custom adapter, I'm going to use the android.r.layout. 
and then there was the simple list item one. So we used this in a previous tutorial. You may have remembered that from a few, uh, few videos ago. But this defines um, a layout that is, that is already built for us. We don't have to create one. Now the last thing is, what is the data source? Well, we have this thing called URI list. So let's add that. So then the last set is called uh, set list adapter. And so we're going to change this to adapter. Now you're gonna ask, where does it set this? I don't see any, anything to a list view. Well, the key is that there was a predefined list view made for us, and that was the strange looking one that was listed here in their list view. So Android ID list. So that has to be that name, otherwise this code won't work. Okay, so this code is built. Now we have to be able to have a way to display this in view. So we're going to go back and reprogram one button, or not reprogram it, but set it up. So we have this button underscore list, and its job is just simply display another activity. So let's go down into the uh, section where we're doing the on-click listeners, and we'll create a new one. So btn uh, list is what I'm looking for, and we'll say set on-click listener. Okay, so I've got the click listener set, and I have an on-click method. Inside here, I want to create an intent. So I need two different things in my intent. First of all, I need the context. So let's see, the context is gonna be the V button and we're gonna get the context of it. And the second is I want to know where I'm supposed to go. This is an explicit intent. Uh, intent. So the class name is photo list. And so let's put photo list.class. So I'm gonna start it now. So let's do start activity. So you notice I have two activity starts. I have one that says for results and another one that just says intents. So I'm not expecting to get any data back. This is not a service, so I'm gonna use the second one called just the generic start intent. And so put an I in there. All right, so that should display the next activity. Let's see if it works. Okay, so we got the app running. Let's see if we can load a photo and we'll get it from our camera directory and we'll choose this guy here. So there's the picture of the camera, of the kitchen. All right, so now if I choose list, it will load a list and show me the first URI. We can choose the back arrow and let's take another photo and see if we get a different version. So it looks like I'm gonna take a picture of the door. So we'll do a check mark here and okay that picture. And we have a door photo and there's the URI and now we do a list you can see that I am now collecting a list of recently used URIs. So that's, I don't know if that'll be useful in one of your apps, but that's a nice way to keep track of what you've seen along the way. So that pretty much brings us to the end of the photo app demo. I've showed you how to uh, get an intent to the camera, get an intent to the uh, uh, image gallery, and then uh, convert these both to high resolution files, use the Glide um, custom library, and then create a global list of recently used uh, photos. So there's a lot of things, a lot of parts in this app, even though it's maybe not the most beautiful, but it will in, hopefully improve you and uh, answer a lot of questions about more complicated apps to come.